Well, a very good morning to you all, and I'd like to extend my thanks to the organisers, the hosts, and this invitation to come and join this conference in its ninth year. It's my first ISCA conference, and I'm already enjoying it from the opening session last night and the engagement which the organisers and the contributors made to set us off on the right note of getting moving. And that, of course, is the centre to this. And I've been invited to uh, talk to you about the new global action plan on physical activity and why sport, physical activity is important to health. And I'm going to use that introductory um, uh, title, that introduction, to then go into the details of how we can work together to promote a more active and healthier world. Firstly, let me open and bring greetings from Geneva, the headquarters of WHO, where I work. And we have a, a nice building on the left, a new boss on the right, a clear mission in the center, and three targets. Our targets have been set by Dr. Tedros, the new Director General, who wants to see that we really do deliver on the ambitions of a healthier, uh, healthier world. We need to promote health, keep the world safe, which is the protection and emergency work, and serve the vulnerable, which is making sure that everyone has access to the basic health care to improve their lives. In the centre, you see three circles, because he's very outcome-focused. Three billion goal, the triple billions. And in that, we want one billion people who are protected from the emergencies and the changes that are happening rapidly in the world. Known and unknown, expected and unexpected, we need to be prepared and respond. To serve the vulnerable, making sure basic health care is available to another billion people in this time frame of the next five years. But it's the top one where I think we will all connect. And it's my department that uh, sits within this ambition, the Department of Health Promotion, within the uh, uh, prevention of NCDs, and along with many other colleagues, because we have the biggest umbrella, healthier people. One billion people who'll be healthier through the work we do. So in this presentation, I'd like to take a four-part. I'd like to introduce that link between physical activity and health, show you how active we are, look at this new action plan that I've introduced and you've heard about, but then focus on the implementation. I want to, at the very least, one, inform you. So you know what the World Health Organization is doing, you know how to connect and what is of interest to you. Two, I hope to inspire you to inspire you that the work you're doing has a role and a place and hopefully inspire you to inspire others. And three, I'd like to invite you, because this job is big, and so we're going to need all of us working together to achieve this goal. So let me start with the first area, and I'm going to move ambitiously through quite a lot of slides because I think you know a lot of this. And the documents on the left set the scene. We've known it for years, culminated in leading pivotal documents like the US Surgeon General in 1996, his report summarizing the importance, and continuing with many countries, your countries uh, and elsewhere, confirming, reinforcing that body of scientific knowledge, summarized in the right graph with that pattern that shows us increasing levels of activity and fitness, no matter how measured, no matter how it's measured, the evidence is strong of a dose-response relationship. We reduce ill health, the risk of ill health, by being more active. Well, it's got three messages, and I think we're all on that page. There is an amount we want to achieve, and that's shown between the two black lines. But there's also a very important message. Anything is better than nothing. And we'll come back to that, because there's a lot of people we need to move from that first part to being reaching the recommended. And we know, and no matter than you know, more is better. More is better for lots of health outcomes and benefits. 
We've summarized all that in global guidelines, national guidelines, and countries like Canada, the US, have been updating that, and we are updating the global guidelines. But I think everyone here is aware of the messages around cardiovascular health and aerobic activities of 150 minutes of moderate intensity. But we less focus on the importance of the muscular strength training. And it's there. It's been there for many years, and we should be looking at that more closely. And we know for children, evidence shows that a little bit more for all the health benefits and development benefits, one hour a day. We've also produced new guidelines for little children. Work initiated in other countries like Canada and Australia have led and has supported WHO to develop new guidelines on under fives. We know it's important from the very little age, and we should encourage parents, caregivers to be aware of this and work to ensure children get that physical activity. Why? Because it counts. It counts because it can improve health, and if we flip that, prevent disease, and WHO often talks about the diseases and the illness and the cost to healthcare, so we go from the negative, but it's all about promoting health, preventing premature, early deaths. And these sorts of numbers come from calculations of how much can be attributed to physical inactivity, over and above smoking, overweight and obesity, alcohol. And if that's how much can be contributed, we can improve then. We must increase physical activity to remove that. But this 3.2 million by one calculation, 5 million by another, they still underestimate it because we haven't included everything. The latest research on brain health and prevention of dementia and calculating the cost to falls and musculoskeletal are not included in those other numbers. More numbers, more research, more quantification is needed. But we know enough. We know enough of the importance about physical activity, and it is important, because this slide shows you and reminds you three quarters of deaths are due to non-communicable disease, chronic disease, heart disease, diabetes, cancers. It can be prevented, and certainly the 15 million that are occurring in people aged between 30 and 70 can be prevented by more physical activity as well as other healthy lifestyles. That's important in the biggest of pictures, as we have the sustainable development agenda. And that is certainly at the foremost of our minds of recent weeks and over the past year. Action is needed. We are in a perilous position. But health is central. And WHO is responsible, lead agency, for achieving one of the goals, 3.4, and that is reducing those premature deaths. But we put health in the centre of that circle because it's through health you can improve employment and economies. Through health we can achieve many of the other sustainable development goals. And you know, and we heard last night, we'll hear more today, you know that physical activity brings more than just health benefits. You can read this faster than I'll go through. The benefits extend into multiple areas. And I think we need to present, sell, market, communicate these much, much more to your decision makers, to those your stakeholders. Economic benefits. How? More people walking and cycling buy more from local shops more frequently. If you remove the car parks from outside of shops, you can often get more people cycling and using it. Pedestrianise increases local retail. Retail like it. They don't like it at the beginning. They think they need the car spaces. They think their customers are all using the cars and it will be devastating. Actually, proven to be the opposite. Just one example. We'll have more. How active are we? Well, you'll expect WHO to have some data on this. We collect the best available data to try and bring together a summary picture. And that summary picture today is bleak. It's bleak for two reasons. Firstly, one in four adults do not do enough physical activity. They don't meet that first black line. Remember I mentioned about those people we want to encourage to move? Doing anything is better than nothing. They're the people in this group, one in four of the adults. But look at the data on the adolescents. Three out of four. Something is happening in our societies, the societies we plan, design, and are part of, 
that children in their teenage years are dropping out of doing physical activity. The second reason, I'm sorry, the uh, um, data are important, we looked at trend. And the most profound thing about this slide is it's flat. Looking across the last 15, 16 years, we see that we haven't made a difference on changing the problem. Physical inactivity levels are static. We also have a gender gap. It is profound. It is not narrowing. Arguably, it's widening. Average 8% difference in countries, up to 20% difference in some countries. Women are less active than men. Women are not getting the activity benefits we've talked about. But what could have been? What could have been if we'd put in together all that evidence I've just introduced, if we'd acted back then, the last five years, the last three years, we could have been on a different trajectory. We need to set the new trajectory. Quickly, when we look around the world, it differs. It varies in different parts of the world, and we have to recognize and work with the context and cultures and situation. But the problem and worry is where we are today. High-income Western Europe, which includes the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the whole of Europe, is on the left-hand side here. It is on the worst side, the highest levels, closely and next door to Latin America and Caribbean. Where is Hungary? This is the Euro data unpacked. I'm sorry you can't read all the letters, but just look for the blue. The blue country is highlighted for you. There's a problem in Europe. Many countries are over that average, getting reaching up to 40 to 45%. There's also countries at the top that don't even have any data. Another problem. I've put in here for interest to you. Other regions are similar. Countries with no data. And I've just highlighted in blue two countries where I've just recently visited, the US and Brazil. Challenges all around the world. Challenges because the world's changing rapidly with things like globalization and more use of cars, less walking and cycling. The, um, Technology use, changing how we work, how we recreate. We're all using phones and screens so much more. So we see in these data the lowest levels of inactivity in the low income. But by the time we get to high income countries and that trajectory over time, just in the colored bars, 2001 to 2016, we see the higher increasing levels of inactivity, the problem. Why do I show the data as a problem? Because we have to contextualize it within the other areas, which are also competing for demands, competing for money, competing for attention. Smoking, obesity, abuse of alcohol. But when we promote physical activity, we obviously talk about physical activity and the positives. I think that lays bare the need for a new global action plan. The last strategy was in 2004, so a long time ago. Member states were concerned about those data, concerned about what they can see, and they said, bring the latest science, link with the SDGs, give us a roadmap, and accelerate implementation. We workshopped, consulted, sought advice, try to understand and hear from many quarters of the world what are the issues, what are the solutions today from science, from practice. Through that consultation, we got the ideas, we got input, and many of you will have consulted, and we thank you still for that invaluable work, because we did it. We created a global action plan, bringing the best knowledge to date. And here it is, the Global Action Plan on Physical Activity, a healthier world, more active people for a healthier world. We took an existing target of 25, uh, for 2025, a 10% improvement, and we stretched to 2030, 15% improvement. There are some guiding principles, and the introduction this morning reminded us, children have a right to play. This isn't just a nice to do, if you would like to, children have a right, older people have a right, disabilities have, people living with disabilities have a right. We need to leverage the underpinning conventions that set this as a way we want society to operate. Evidence, of course, equity. 
But with that equity agenda, we need to do more for the least active. So I will challenge you. It's not about more of what you're doing to more of the same people. We won't change those numbers. It's about more and different to new, new people, putting more effort, proportional universality, to the older, to the women, to the people living with chronic disease or disabilities, to the disadvantaged communities. So we have to challenge the work we do, and maybe many of you are already doing that. And of course, partnerships. In brief, the Global Action Plan has a framework of four policy action areas. Remember, this came from you and many others. We know there is not one solution. And I'd like to take you through these four areas fairly rapidly, but remember we've got the two days and a panel discussion this morning. So let's have a look at the first area in red, creating active societies by changing the cultural values, very relevant to this organisation. We need to improve knowledge and understanding, those data we know, making sure our politicians, decision makers, understand, act. But it's not just them, it's us. If we get in our car for a short trip and park outside a house, uh, our venue or destination, and then expect everyone else to walk and cycle. There's a dissonance there. We have got to address the dissonance in our culture between talking about health and activity and actually making those changes. This is such an old slide. I invite someone to help me to change it. I'm embarrassed to use it every time. But it says the same message. And I always say that was a, a medical conference on the right. Attendees to a medical conference chose the escalator. I'd love to say they'd all done a 10K run in the morning. I don't think so. But what about on the right? Is it not madness that we keep building more roads and think we'll solve congestion and air pollution? We have got a dissonance in what we invest in, the infrastructure and our behaviours. Three of the actions aim at this area. We can do campaigns. Campaigns on health, campaigns on co-benefits, one and two. I give these cycling examples from a recent conference. Not just sport, not just play, not just walking, not just being generally active. Let's get specific. Let's use the best communication strategies and techniques. Engage and enjoy, free events. We're very good at that. Do more. We also need to build capacity, the fourth. We need to give skills, training and support. If you want PE teachers to do better, we have to support them. Road designers and engineers to put in cycleways that work for us, they need the skills and knowledge. It's there in places, but not everywhere. Number two. That's all about wanting, raising, awareness, knowledge but we need the places and spaces. And here you see active um, uh, environments is about the spaces and places. And I know many in this audience work in this area. We also know how to do that. Creating the environments again for walking, for cycling, for play and for sports. Many of these are transport related, but we know that access and appropriate facilities are important. We do know that outside many cities, the reality is more like that. Danger, congestion, car dominated, polluted. If we keep building cities like that, we will still struggle to change people's behavior. We're quite sensible, women in particular. Women are a barometer. More women cycling, you're getting things right. And women will help children cycle, cycling to school but we haven't got it right in many, many places. But we know the answers. We can design better. And action five is planning and urban design, land allocation, mixed use, all the ingredients being put together in the right way. Action six is making sure the infrastructure is there for safe walking and cycling. Guidelines are available. Action nine is around the parks, making sure they're there, their quality 
and their distribution, which is why I've put that little excerpt there, a map of Western Australia, Perth metropolitan area where I lived, where we mapped the gradation of access to green space. No surprises. The rich have more. Better quality, more amenity. In the poorer areas, less green space, less amenity. And then we see less physical activity. This is not complicated. It is political. We need to improve designs of schools, healthcare, workplaces, encouraging physical activity, how you get there, when you're there. Now we have the knowledge and culture changing, the places and spaces, we now need to look at what we do in them. They are not enough. They are necessary, but we need this one. We've been doing a lot of this. The programs and opportunities that will invite, engage, skill, and create the enjoyable experiences. Across all the settings, look at this slide and tick off which ones you're working with, either the place or the people. And I reckon we've got this covered. But we need not just in your town and your program, not just here in Hungary and Europe, we need this available to everyone in their communities. But the solutions are known. And firstly, number 11, schools. We do know what to do in schools, and I've simplified it, and WHO will be simplifying it to five things. We must do better at PE, active classes, active transport, active playgrounds, and active opportunities after school. By the school, by the community. If you've got all five of those happening well in schools, primary through, indeed kindergarten through, we would be in a much better place. We've been saying this for years. We've got to look at the barriers and the political reasons, the decision-making as to why that's not happening, and many of you in the area, in the room, are in this area. From schools, number 12 goes to healthcare. This is our domain. Health should be contributing, and it contributes through making sure a patient will receive advice when they should. Hypertensive patient, asked if they smoke, are they asked if they're active enough? Doing any activity? Are they supported? Is it assessed and followed up? They are the ingredients. It should happen to the hypertensive patient and any other patient. But where does the patient go? It's not the healthcare's job to run the opportunities and programs. That's in the community. So I invite you again to consider and work on this area with health departments and health sector. 12 and 13 are about more opportunities in parks, playgrounds, uh, in the community, for children of all ages, through sport, of course. But sport must offer more opportunities. I remind you of the 81% of adolescents that are leaving sport, or at least not doing the recommendation. Why? They love it at age 10, 7, 8, 9. We know they want different things these days. Perhaps less structure, perhaps less competition. And what about our older population, where they seem to not have enough opportunities that meet their needs in the right location, at the right pace? And look at all of those photos. It's all about doing it together, the joint and the social and the group activities. And I think this room and the conference will be full of very good ideas. My frustration is those ideas are not scaled to have them available in all communities. The last two areas are very important. We are neglecting people living with disabilities. We don't measure, we don't provide enough programs, and culturally, our values are that maybe they don't need it, or they can't do it. Wrong, 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 and wrong. This is a major area of focus for WHO, and I hope everyone here. We can work with the levers of cities, and that's why we put a special section on cities, because you've got opportunity and scale to really make a difference and see that difference within years. The fourth and final area is where we must make sure the systems are in place to support that. Governance, those policies, recommendations I mentioned globally, you need them locally at your country level. Data, 
There's a lovely dialogue going on on one of our um, um, exchange platforms here for this conference about the value of data, the need for data. What kind of data? Do we have enough data? If we have enough, why it's the problem? Advocacy, partly this conference, many of the things we do. Innovation and research, and of course, all of those being used to leverage more investment and prioritization. Much more detail is in the appendix of the full document available at WHO website. But what I want to do now is not just list all 20 of those, but show you this as a system. I've just taken the 20 areas that I've introduced, and I've shown how color-coded they link, because it's not just one or the other of these. You can't just take the red one, mass media campaign. We've actually tried that. You get a little change for one or two years, and then it dissipates. And then we say, oh, look, it didn't work. Well, on its own, without the environment, so that it can do safe walking and cycling, it was unfortunately predictable it would have um, less effect. You can't provide programs if people can't afford them or get to them, other barriers. So when you start to see these as connected solutions, you get a whole of system approach. I like to say it's the, guy, it's the lines on this which are more important than the single areas. Implementation is important. We're moving into that phase now that we launched last year. We launched with the uh, Director General, the Prime Minister of Portugal, lots of footballs, and a very big advocacy moment. It wasn't just sport, it was play and walking. We know that we need to get this right for sport, for play, and for active transport. Fix the environments, the policies, and the programs. We've got a um, logo, let's be active, everyone, everywhere, every day. We created a video that we might show later if we haven't got time uh, right now. I'm not sure I can override this video at this moment. I can't. Have we got 90 seconds? We'll just watch this. We live in a world beating with urgency, breathing with difficulty, breaking under necessity. We are a society consumed by technology, compact in proximity choked by inactivity. We are global. We are responsible. We are trending. We are too inactive. Everyone. Everywhere. Every day. We have a plan. It's time to activate our governments, to activate our environments, to activate our society, to activate ourselves. It's time to activate movement, to activate improvement, to reverse our direction, to activate new trends. We need to alert you. We need to activate everyone, everywhere, every day. Available for you to use and downloadable from the website and YouTube. I'm being given a time check here, so I'm going to finish by giving you a whistle-stop tour of how we are choosing to promote and engage at the highest levels and down to the community level, and what we plan to do next. It's rapid, but we have the panel discussion to challenge both myself and, of course, the panelists of how can we do this together. We went round the world at key WHO meetings, high level making sure the decision makers had a football, had it in their hand, putting it right underneath their noses to pay attention. In Africa, in the Middle East, and at the World Health Assembly last year. Noting the skipping enjoyment last night, we brought skipping to the World Health Organization. Ministers of Health skipping. Hadn't done it for 35, 40 years. Great fun. It's memorable. We know that's all important, advocacy and dissemination. Critical while it's new, critical for the continuing next 18 months.
WHO has a big job, a job it can't do on its own. I won't go through all of these because I've got brochures that you can pick up to go through with, uh, to read about these. However, dissemination in multiple languages, toolkits that people can use, summarizing those key areas I mentioned, five things in schools, five things in um, workplaces, five things in cities. Guidelines, I mentioned they're being updated due autumn 2020. Many thanks to those contributing to this. Partnerships at the highest level with the UN, particularly UNESCO, working on that PE and sport agenda. Sports, IOC, up to the IOC events like Paris, like Tokyo, what can we use, do, work together to mobilize people around these wonderful events but also after them. Working with the sports federations, working with private sector, and that's a new area you may wish to ask me about. Working with digital technologies, developing our own and working with partners, and monitoring. We need to show impact. Three billion target, one billion healthier, 15% improvement by 2030. We are unpicking how we will see our progress to see that change going forward. We'll have an opportunity for a global status report next year in 2020, a report that will share with the world progress, challenge and inspire. Can we do this, this systems approach? Yes, we can. There are countries now launching their national action plans with much of the right ingredients. Policies are necessary, but insufficient. We do need to have the translation, and that's why this conference is on a spot-on theme. How do we now take the mandate, because you need the mandate, of these policies into those uh, actions at the ground level. And there are many examples I could talk about. I think I'm short of time because I wanted to see how in this group, how many of you are involved. And if I was indulged, we'd actually get people moving in very quick order. Because if you think you work in any one of these areas, get ready to stand up. Do you work in any of these areas? Oh dear, very uninspiring standing up. Sit down. Thank you. If you work in the red area, stand up. Culture change, education, knowledge, training. Any of you working in that area? If you work in the yellow area, stand up. Sit down the red people, stand up the yellow people. Oh, some in this area, creating the programs and solutions. Sit down. If you work in the blue area, research, data, innovations. <laughs> Quarter of the room. Sit down. Green area, environment, cycling, walking, parks, play. Again. If you work in any area, stand up. <laughs> Thank you very much.